LGBT Gee Whiz. Humble narrowly nicks his nutty cultist. Local gays rejoice fabulously. Unfortunately for everyone involved, no, that's not a clickbait title. While the story is thankfully brief, and spoilers, it does have a happy ending, that was simply the best way that I could describe the series of events that took place over the course of a very hectic week. And it only lasted a week thanks to the quick action and the voice of the community, as well as leaders who actually listen to their constituents. So while this project was originally going to be more gloom and doom call to action, we thankfully get to breathe a sigh of relief. But let's start from the beginning. I was scrolling on my phone when I saw a post that a friend of mine had shared. The name of the original poster was cropped out, and as we'll find out later, that post would end up being deleted. I was pretty alarmed to read the following. The Humboldt County Board of Supervisors is set to appoint a woman named Lucinda Jackson who represents an anti-LGBTQ church to the Human Rights Commission. This is absolutely abhorrent and cannot stand. Here's a screenshot about the appointment directly from the upcoming Board of Soups meeting agenda. Also, here's links to the church's website, showing her as representing the ministry at the state level, and a link to the group's local Facebook page, complete with her picture and all kinds of anti-trans content. That link is facebook.com forward slash B-L-C-C Salt and Light. That's S-A-L-T-A-N-D-L-I-G-H-T. This appointment cannot stand. Please call your county supervisor and let them know that people who won't give LGBTQ people their human rights don't deserve to be on a human rights commission. The post then gives all the phone numbers of the various supervisors of Humboldt County. Also included was an incredibly frightening action alert from Salt and Light Ministries, the ministry that, again, Jackson represents on the state level that would negatively impact trans health care. We'll be getting into this much later. Most hauntingly, the evidence for why the ministry thinks this action needs to be taken is a bunch of various quoted scriptures. You know, for a legislative ordeal. But thankfully, the people who saw this post listened, and the Board of Supervisors was absolutely flooded with calls. A detail I was unaware of when I started my interview with Julie Tyler. So my name is Julie Tyler. Uh, I use they, them pronouns. I live here in Arcata. I am an educator. I work at an elementary school. And I am also a activist in my own terms. I am starting to do trainings in local schools about gender identity and how to establish a gender positive classroom. But before we actually got to the introductions part, we had already gotten into a conversation after starting the recording where they revealed like an acquaintance who shared that post and I saw her post it. So it was just spread. But I don't, I'm not sure who the original poster is. But since since Lucinda Jackson's resigned appointment um that post has been deleted so that content's not there anymore but i still screenshotted that shit. still have that just to have like as a record like to keep tabs on this person like yeah she might not be appointed now due to a high volume of calls to the supervisors in eureka but that doesn't mean i mean she's part of like this cult of a church. So this was new information, and I stuttered out an interruption somewhat sheepish because I came into this all serious thinking I was going to have to do some kind of story to, of all things, convince a board of supervisors for a county I don't live in to please not hire a bigoted cultist to something called the Human Rights Commission. But thankfully, Julie knew what was up, and they assured me that that would not be the case. Um, and I'm supported and just so, like, I just feel so lucky to be supported by my staff by my family by my community when having when seeing this original post i was just like appalled and like oh hell no like <laughs> this is not like we're not gonna no we're not gonna let this slide like we're gonna do something this then got the topic on to julie's workplace they've mentioned being a trans educator who works alongside a supportive staff what they had to say was quite different from a lot of experiences i know i and plenty of others have had in the past that is since this whole COVID, I think equity and just racism, homophobia, sexism, misogyny, the issues of our last illustrious leader that was in office, um, I think there's a big shift in, especially with educators and learning and like, how are we going to teach our children, our students, um, how to be better citizens and be empathetic and addressing these issues that are a part of our society, that are part of our systems of oppression. My staff, has been really open to that and we're extremely grateful to have that information you know including terminology because i think the wider cis hetero society just doesn't really have a clue and it may be confusing for them so just to have somebody especially who works with them and that they know um 
and their story too, and just understanding and learning from that. So I think it's really, really beneficial for teachers, especially too. Of course, they're far from oblivious. Again, Julie is an activist and they do their research. In fact, they are quite aware of what the surrounding area is like when it comes to opportunities like these. I was given like this assignment. It wasn't like, you know, like a mandatory thing, but just to like see, hey, like what are some resources that are available in rural Northern California counties like Mendocino, Humboldt Lake, Del Mar and Trinity. And when looking up like in Del Mar and Trinity, like there's nothing. And I, and I know like there's, from people I, you know, in the past few years that I've known, like who live in Del Norte, that they come down to Humboldt and stuff for those services, like for support groups. I mean, this is pre-COVID, um, but just, I, I, I mean, I just can't even imagine like not, not having anything, but then you messaged me and I was like, whoa, like there's just a little, like a little gem there. Like that's, you know, like blossoming. And I just think that's really amazing railroading the interview just a bit, I asked them what else they happened to know of Lucinda Jackson. The lady in question, with what I knew to be a fairly radical religious organization, soon to be appointed to something that could cause quite the blow to a few communities. Julie puts it succinctly. So I did some research because I just, I want to know who this person is. I want to know, like, who are we going to be dealing with? So Lucinda Jackson is a um, administrative analysis of the Humboldt County Office of Elections in Eureka. Um, she is a part of uh, Blue Lake Community Church in here in Blue Lake. And with Blue Lake, and I, and I was kind of confused at first, and I'm like, hmm, like, is it the church? At? So what it is, is so there's this ministry called Salt and Light Citizenship Ministry. It's a national organization. And what they do is they go into these churches, you know, and are kind of providing these churches with like this material, I guess you would say. Uh, and these beliefs and philosophies and stuff like that. So Salt and Light Citizenship Ministry is has a chapter in Eureka, um, and Blue Lake has taken on, like, that philosophy and taken on, like, that membership, I guess you would say. And they're very, very anti-LGBT, anti-trans. Um, looking looking at, like, their Facebooks, and that those links were provided in that original post in Facebook. All these, like, just toxic anti-trans, all these things. So this is what Julie found about this person. Already a fairly sketchy figure, but but let me remind you that she was set to be appointed to the Human Rights Commission. Exactly, a Human Rights Commission that is, we are going to aid in eradication of any forms of discrimination in housing, employment, you know, education, public accommodation. And so that appoint somebody who's like fighting for that and like protecting people like us, queer people, people of color, BIPOC people, people with a disability. How how are you going to appoint somebody like that who has these beliefs and who is part of like this cult? And that's a great question they ask. How are you going to appoint someone like this? I asked them if they had any idea how all this came to be. I'm not sure. I don't live in Eureka, so I'm not sure how it worked, but I guess there, there's different districts uh, in Eureka. And so um, in District 4, and I believe it's Virginia Bass, from what I saw, who is who's the supervisor for that district, I'm not sure her political like party i think she might be a democrat but like was going to appoint this woman and and i don't know if there was like a connection because um lucinda jackson already works for the county with you know that administrative analysis position in the office of elections so i'm not sure if there's like a connection there but it was really surprising to like to see that um especially like eureka being kind of you know like a melting pot i guess you would say of like identities and yeah <laughs> Despite some of the confusion, they are referring correctly to Virginia Bass, 4th District Supervisor of Humboldt County. I emailed Supervisor Bass on the matter, hoping to reach out and get her statement, or anything she'd like to say for this story as well. She responded with a lengthy email, and while I certainly have some thoughts about it that I won't get into on this report, the following is Supervisor Virginia Bass's statement regarding the appointment of Lucinda Jackson. What I told the people who contacted me was that the board as a whole has many committees to fill and not a lot of applicants, so when people are indeed interested, they often get appointed. 
Unlike employment, there's not a required background check. Based on her application, it showed many activities that she has been involved in, which were a good fit regarding some of the issues the commission deals with. While I am not involved in any organized religion, I do recognize that people have a right to their opinion. That opinion should not be a primary guiding factor to either include or exclude someone from being involved. In a case where that person has a conflict due to having a strong opinion on an issue where they may be viewed as biased, that person has an obligation to remove themselves from conversation on that specific issue. In some ways, this person was discriminated against due to her religious beliefs, so that is a problem as well. People have the right to freedom of religion just as much as they have the right to other freedoms. It is an unfortunate fact today that people seem to have a harder time with tolerance and working with people who think differently. I know that isn't new, but I think things are getting even more intense. As in other situations, diversity in committee makeup is good because it sparks good conversation and hopefully a better understanding of where each other are coming from. I'm not a huge user of Facebook or online platforms, but what I can say, given this experience, is people should be more aware of the things they post as I think it does color one's perception and rightly so. In the future, I will dig around more on people that approach us for appointment. I think extreme activism attitude on any level is problematic when you're trying to work as a group to better your community. Different ideas are great, but something extreme in any direction is more challenging. That's not saying it can't be done, but I think it takes a lot more understanding from all the people at the table to accept that others feel differently. I always try to find the upside of something, and I do think this experience has provided some of that for sure. There is now much increased interest in this commission in particular, and I do believe after I requested several people send in applications that this is happening, so it will be good to have a bigger poll of people to choose from. Also, we've asked the Human Rights Commission themselves to help guide us in what they're looking for. They will be working on an updated application that will hopefully elicit more information, which will be helpful in determining who to appoint. Ms. Jackson met with, I believe, two individuals from the commission and had conversation. Neither one of them detected an issue during conversation. Thus concludes the statement of Supervisor Virginia Bass. Julie then got onto the topic of their response. One echoed, it sounds like, by much of the community. I was just just shocked and like seeing this woman being appointed I'm like what like I was just not having it so I called I called all of the supervisors uh I left messages for four of them actually spoke to one who answered um and his name was Steve Madrone and he was so understanding like yeah I've been, we've been getting a lot of calls here and people are just like really upset and I just said you know as a trans educator I'm you know if this person is appointed what's that going to mean for people like me and people in our community um of of any like identity you know my, minority um how is that gonna I mean I'm I'm worried about myself I'm worried about my friends my students um and he's like yeah like yeah like just agreeing like I totally understand and it's wrong and so I was just like okay like that's cool and then the next day Another supervisor I left a message for, uh, Mike Wilson, he actually called me back and I didn't leave my number, but it's probably on, you know, his caller ID. And he's like, I just want to let you know that her appointment has been resigned. And, you know, I just want to let you know that because I know a lot of people were really worried and we had a high volume of people in the community calling to like, to not go forward. I mean, those supervisors couldn't do anything really. It was, it was the supervisor in district four, um, Virginia Bass, who was going to be appointing her. So it was ultimately her decision to do that. So I think, you know, she heard the community spoke, um, and, you know, like called, called that out and resigned her appointment. So that was like really, wow, especially, you know, having a supervisor call back. Um, and I just think that really speaks volumes about, about the supervisors and Humboldt in Eureka, but also our community here, um, I mean, there's pockets of, you know, places I wouldn't go to that are necessarily like, you know, Trumpy kind of like, you know, conservative, rednecky. I don't know. It just really says a lot about our community. I think that, yes, there may be some people who are, you know, like <laughs> wackadoodles maybe or part of some cult church thing. But overall, I think our community has a really strong belief that, you know, everybody has the right to live here. It doesn't matter who you are or what identity you have and are going to be supportive. And that just, I feel safe here for the most part um, in Arcata and Eureka. And I think we have a long way to go, but I just think that was an example of just the community coming together. So I got to leave our call on that note. 
This story, thankfully, wasn't the call to action that I thought it was going to be. It's a sigh of relief, a pleasant reminder, a good symptom, even. There's some practical advice to take from this story. Sharing those posts for a good cause does work. Get to know the people around you and the situations happening to them. Call your supervisors, because some will genuinely listen, and others will at least be reminded who they represent. For Edward Voice, I'm Persephone Rose.